Hey guys, good afternoon. It's Sandy Shellis and uh, another unplanned one because I can't ever plan like I always say and uh, forgive the neck thing. It's so I can hold my head up today. I had a kind of a migraine for two days and felt like shit. So maybe I'll take it off, but I'm going to start with it on. I just don't want it to be, you know, just to be disconcerted about well, what the hell is that? It is what it is. And uh, welcome. So today, the UN report on emissions came out. But before we go into that, I want to talk about something else to start. Uh, because channels like mine, you know, a lot of people could dismiss us, summarily dismiss us and say, well, they're not scientists. What do they know? Or they're regurgitating the information. And I want to let you know that I did, I have studied on this. I've I did some research in my past. I found videos, but when I went to college, I don't think the, the Dunning-Kruger effect had been studied yet. So I thought I would start out today with uh, going over this just a tiny bit so we can talk about it. And let me say hi. And then we are going to the, um, the meat of today. All right the meet of today. Hi, bio. And oh, wow, we have a great, we have a great, great. So the timing's right, huh? Five o'clock, maybe that's best for me because I let the madness begin goes on at seven and I really like their show for me to watch. So, uh, and here is Chris and Natural Progressive. Great. And Oz is here. And okay, well, thank you. And let's get started. Oh, as Shiva's here. Hi, sweetie. She's going to make some tea. All right, good. And Void is here. He was chatting um, about his manure compost, which was very interesting. <laughs> He's always very interesting up there in the Pacific Northwest. So, and in Zox. Okay, this is great. All right, let's get started on this really quickly because we're going to talk about the UN, the Dunning Kruger effect. Now, again, I was started out saying that when I went to my undergraduate in psychology, I didn't study this or I don't remember studying it, you know, because I think this was after, I mean, I graduated, you know, a hundred years ago. So with that degree and whatever, but I don't have the Dunning-Kruger effect. I have definitely, I've been in therapy too long. And also I think uh, um, that, I don't know, we'll go there. So in the field of psychology, David Dunning and Justin Kruger, they talked about an illusionary superiority that people believe or they suffer from in. It happens because of misjudging their cognitive abilities as greater than it actually is. It's the inability to understand your own incompetence, which leads to an inflated self-assessment. Now, I have been self-assessing for 50 years. <laughs> and so I think this research is pretty fascinating because really it it makes you, it, well, they talk about it with Trump supporters a lot, but yet I think that, the, that this could be, um, it could be for a lot of things. And personally, for me, I look at myself certainly as not um, with, a, with that kind of cognitive bias, but I constantly, and I think we might all do this, we constantly have to check ourselves because it's very easy to fall into that feeling. Um, everybody's on the internet arguing with everybody else. That feeling of, um, you know, uh, like, like me, for example, I'm not a skilled scientist, but I recognize that. And most of the people that are in this genre that talk about climate change that aren't scientists recognize this, okay? So, so um, we, we defer to those that are a lot more knowledgeable and that's how we learn. Like Stuart Scott from Scientist's Warning, who's gonna be at uh, COP25, Jem Bendel, Deep Adaptation, Peter Wadhams, Arctic Ice, Peter Carter up in Canada, everything in climate change, Wallace Broker, James Hansen, Susan Solomon. I mean, there's then there's the, the team that even comes on with me, Antonio um, Reed, and Nicholas Humphrey, a me who's a meteorologist. So Jennifer Hines, who studies methane in her copious free spare time. All of these people know way more 
than I do. I am just here to talk about it or go crazy because I, I can't do much so I can talk a little. And I, I, so I, I tried to look into this to make sure, but I think the Dunning-Kruger effect is something we all should look at. And before I go on, I just wanna go over this, uh, the causes, and then we're gonna go on from there. So I have a little graphic that I'm going to put on because I'm not Miss Wonderful at these graphics. Uh, and here's the, the one, um, the dunning Kruger. Right? It's, its effect is also related to difficulties with metacognition or the ability to step back and look at one's own behavior and abilities from outside of oneself. People are often only able to evaluate themselves from their own limited and highly subjective point of view. From this limited perspective, they seem highly skilled, knowledgeable, and superior to others. Because of this, people sometimes struggle to have a more realistic view of their own abilities. And I think a lot of us are so very cognizant of this because of our savvy in social media, but that doesn't put us ahead of anybody. I don't feel, you know, okay, there, this, there, here's the checklist, but I constantly step out of myself. Like I said, years of therapy, kind of, you know, years of therapy kind of did that uh, to me. Um, but people are not only incompetent, their incompetence robs them of the mental inability, the mental ability to realize just how inept they are. Now, people are always saying that about Trump supporters, but if you do that, and hey, David Henderson, oh my God. Hey, 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 David from Australia. I haven't seen you in a long time. It's great. David, he has the dodo. He ha you, you can find him on YouTube. He's terrific. Um, all right. Hi, Moose Gal. So here we go. Incompetent people tend to, and I'm sure that self-esteem makes us all feel like this sometimes. We o or, or overestimate their own skills, skills, fail to recognize the genuine skill and expertise of others. I don't, and neither do most of my compadres on this in this medium. Fail to recognize their own mistakes and lack of skill. Dunning also pointed out that the very knowledge and skills necessary to be good at a task are the exact same qualities that a person needs to recognize that they are not good at in that task. So if a person lacks those abilities, they remain not only bad at that task, but ignorant to their own inability. So let's promise that we all are cognizant of this bias, this, this, um, in this, this maybe wanting to inflate ourselves out there when we're fighting on social media or arguing or discussing or chatting or whatever, and we'll go on, okay? So I thought that was a pretty good way to start since our channel, you know, again, it's a small little slice, little tiny corner of this big gigantic thing called YouTube with all these influencers and people that, you know, make money and I don't ask and all of that, you know? So I decided then today, as I knew that, um, and hi, Jilly Love, she says corporations are doing damage. <laughs> they more than we are the problem. Absolutely. They are. Jilly and I, uh, share a lot of you, um, share some of the same, political leanings and thoughts. Of course, that's why you're with me. But sometimes the dissent is good too. There are people that are with us that don't mesh with me all the time. And that's really very cool because I don't think that I am better than them. And I don't think that they know more than me. I mean, don't know any more than me because it would be ridiculous to do that. All right. So the UN came out with the emissions gap report, and we're going to go over that report. And the, the thing I really wanted to talk about, about with this report today is that it is the United Nations annual flagship report. It assesses the emissions gap or that gap between the anticipated emission levels 
in 2030 compared to the levels consistent with a 2C 1.5C target. Now, a lot of people will say that we've already passed that tipping point. We're already past it. Okay, I'm not here to actually talk about the specific science because there will be 10 other people that are way more uh, qualified to do a video on this. And it was late and I couldn't invite anybody on with me anyway. I tried. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to start out with this, this report and talk about a little bit about it's the same thing. I mean, the, the UN has been saying these things for a while. So I, I, every report, you know, and what happens? We get worse and worse and worse. So here's the two, in 2016, the report estimates, this is right from the report, it estimates that they're actually on track for global warming of up to more of 3.4 degrees Celsius. Current commitments, which is the, the Paris Agreement, which we in the United States, complete clueless moron government pulled out of, even though it was in a way more of a symbolic thing to be involved in it. And we should be the leader with other countries. We should be the leader. Current commitments will reduce emissions by no more than a third of the levels required by 2030 to avert disaster. And that was in 2016. Then in 2017, the overarching conclusions of the report are that there is an urgent need for accelerated short-term action and enhancement, enhanced longer-term national ambition if the goals of the Paris Agreement are to remain achievable. And that practical and cost-effective solutions are available to make this possible. Some folks call that hopium. I call it human ingenuity. And it, it, it's not going to stop. Now, 2018, a new report was released on Tuesday of that year, last year, by the UN's Environment Program, UNEP, shows that global carbon dioxide CO2 emissions rose again during 2017 after a three-year hi hiatus, which actually didn't say that in 2016, highlighting the imperative for countries to deliver on the historic Paris Agreement to keep global warming to below 2C above pre-industrial levels. And anybody that came in wonders what the hell this is, it's a neck brace because I have a, a very messed up spine, sorry. And today, in order to do this, I have the whole full regalia on <laughs> of, of uh, braces because it's that or I put rods and stand like this the rest of my life and maybe hurt really even worse than I do now. So. Now that we have gone a little uh, over what that is, and I'm sure a lot of you really get it. You know, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the chat. You're all having a, a good old time. All right. Well, you're having a good old time. I'm going to split the screen and I am going to read right from the UN, but I am not going to read the uh, the 108 page report. I'm going to read the 10 things to know. I got to move that to know about the emissions gap 2019 for clueless morons like me or uh, for idiots like the book series for whatever. OK, so here we go. Listen in, chat amongst yourselves, have fun because I'm off to the races. The annual United Nations Environment Program, which we just read. All right. What, what, are, what is the emissions gap? The emissions gap could also be called the commitment gap. It measures the gap between what we need to do and what we are actually doing to cl tackle climate change. So the gap is the difference between the low level of emissions that the world needs to drop to compared with the projected level of emissions based on countries' current commitments to decarbonization, which who the hell knows what's going to happen now. You know, but I digress. So why does the emissions gap matter? Why does it matter? This United Nations, anyway, says the gap is important because if we can't close it and meet the emissions reduction target, we will face increasingly severe climate impacts worldwide. 
It's important that policymakers and their citizens know what the gap is so that the commitments countries are making are sufficient to close the gap. <sighs> I'm not editorializing yet. What does the emissions gap report measure? Now, how many of you knew about this and how many don't? Because I'm hoping I, I, uh, that I'm bringing some light to some of this stuff, to some of you. Uh, the annual report from UNEP examines the progress of countries cl to close their gap via their commitments to emissions reduction to ultimately stop climate change. The emissions gap report measures and projects three key trend lines. The amount of greenhouse gas emissions every year to 2030, which is coming up fast, the commitments countries are making to reduce their emissions and the impact these commitments are likely to have on overall emission reduction, and the pace at which emissions must be reduced to reach an emission low that would limit temperatures to 1.5 C affordably. And I got to stick in that word affordably. That changes the narrative somewhat. How are we doing? All right, let's see. Can you see that? So they show in their little graph, they have the um, emissions that keep climbing, interestingly enough, even with all the regulations and all that. And now it's all because of the different weights from different countries. So in 10 years of producing the emissions gap report, the gap between what we should be doing and what we are actually doing, it's even wider than ever. On the brink of 2020, we now need to reduce emissions by, and I think it's conservative, 7.6% every year from 2020 to 2030. If we do not, we will miss a closing moment in history to limit global warming to 1.5. If we do nothing beyond our current inadequate commitments to all climate change, temperatures can be expected to rise 3.5% to see above pre-industrial levels with devastating effect. So why are these annual reductions so important? Well, 10 years ago, if countries had acted on this science, governments would have needed to reduce emissions by 3.3% each year. See, today, we need to reduce emissions by 7.6% each year. Hmm. <sighs> By just 2025, the cut needed will steepen to 15.5% each year. Every day we delay, the more extreme, difficult, and expensive the cuts become. And so where do they come from? All right. And I have a bigger slide for this for afterwards. Uh, so it shows on here, I don't know if it's too small for you, the U.S., and of course, China, the EU, India, but the US and China, well, China's the biggest one, it looks like, when you look at this, which is right there. Okay, so G20 nations collectively account for 78% um, of all emissions, but only five G20 members, the EU and four individual members, have committed to long-term zero emission targets of which three are currently in the process of passing legislation and two have recently passed legislation. The top four emitters, China, USA, EU, and India, contribute over 55% of the total emissions over the last decade, even with our fancy cars and all of our things. So I guess, does it matter if Trump deregulates everything and kills us? <laughs> does it really matter? If land use emissions were included, the rankings would change, with Brazil likely to be the largest emitter. The largest scale of emissions come from the energy sector and its fossil fuel emissions. Okay, I think we all knew that, right? Industry produces the next largest footprint, followed by forestry, transport, agriculture, and buildings. Can we still close that gap? Okay, here we go, up and over. Climate change can still be limited to 1.5. We must half our emissions by 2030. Let's cheerlead. This will take a 7.6% cut in emissions every year from 2020. The good news is 
that we have technology and science to decarbonize our energy sources, transport systems, and cities. We have knowledge to halt deforestation and scale reforestation, which reforestation to me is a huge one. To me, that one is. And it's happening. It's happening. And, and, and I have friends, you know, we follow in Africa that it's happening. It's great. And these actions are affordable today. There's that A word. What it takes is commitment. Commitment from governments backed by their citizens. Luckily, there is also an increased understanding of the multiple benefits to act on climate change, such as cleaner air, better health, greener towns and cities, and, and growth within the renewable energy sector. Options for action and the will to implement them are growing just as fast as this understanding. So what are the possible solutions? A full decarbonization of the energy sector is necessary and possible. I know the United States has the Green New Deal. Some people agree with it. Some people don't agree with it. But um, it's going to happen if it's going to happen. Uh, the potential emission reduction, thanks to renewable energy, electricity totals 12.1 gigatons by 2050. I'll be dead. That's equivalent to the annual output of nearly two and a half million coal power stations, more than are operating in the world today. Electrification of transport could reduce the sector's CO2 emissions by a huge 72% by 2050. My kid will be around. She's only 31, right? Lots of us have kids we think about more than myself. Each sector in each country has, a unique op has unique opportunities to harness renewable energy, protect natural resources, lives and livelihoods, and transition to a decarbonization pathway. And then it has what they, on chapter two of the a big report, I clicked, you know, you can see what other countries are doing. And what can I do? Okay, what can I do? Three lines. What can I do? Read the report. Nobody's going to read 108 pages, but some maybe, you know, me. <laughs> or, 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 but I've just read the, um, the for everybody version. Stay informed and urge those with decision making powers to act now. Okay, acting now. Acting now. Okay, I'm not going to talk about it, but first I have that one um, shot. I wanted to put up this image from the other. Uh, article. I'm going to put it up and make it big so you can see it because what it does is it really does show you the top emitters uh, of greenhouse gases, excluding land use change emissions due to the lack of the reliable country level data on an absolute basis left and a per capita basis, per capita basis right. So there you see, you see the biggest emitters, China, USA, EU, India, Russia, Japan, and global. Does it really make you feel like these people in these other countries are really going in us when we pull out of the Paris Agreement, right? And uh, uh, we've pulled out and there's no real way, there's no mechanism of enforcement, right? No mechanism of enforcement. My thing about this is there's going to be those that feel that the UN is con too conservative. And then there's going to be those that say the UN is full of shit and it's not true and it's a hoax. And unfortunately, we are living in a paranoid society, worldwide paranoia. And social media, um, what talk and sound, Shiva? Is it me moving? Is it my earrings? Oh, it could be. <laughs> she said I had a talking sound. So I am I am the science teller. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, you know, I, I mean, I worked with researchers for 20 years and I loved principal investigators. And I really wish I, I really wish I wasn't messed up because I would not be sitting at home trying to grow seeds that aren't growing. <laughs> we're going to starve. Uh, we're not going to starve. But anyway, I'm glad you guys came. So, uh, David. Oh, talking sound. I think it was my earrings maybe going click, click. I dress up to go from the bedroom in here. <laughs> oh, why not? What the hell?
Chili says, um, Jabber, we all must make sacrifices and do whatever we can. Convenience is killing everything. Yep, I'm trying. Well, I'm very inconvenienced in life. And I'm trying to like really, uh, not that it's going to matter. I think really what I'm doing is just trying to simplify my life and get rid of everything so that when I do drop dead, it's much easier for my kid so she doesn't have a mess to clean up. And I know that sounds really crass, but that's reality, you know. And uh, I don't want so much crap. I don't want to dust. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about emissions and I have a wood stove, you know. So there you go. Hey, D. Ham is with us from Oak Cliff, Texas. Hey, thanks for joining. So what do you guys think? What do you think about, um, okay, let's see, David, truth. The amount of people across the world prepared to take a hit to their lifestyle for the benefit of the planet could fit in a football stadium, and you're probably right, and I'm probably not in that football stadium yet. But I do, I, and, and I'm not crazy. I just started to, to have this availability of what we would need in some kind of catastrophic event or some kind of event that, you know, I needed to go. How, what would we do? And that's where some of the prepper channels are good because these guys are, you know, they're, they're not, they're, I mean, there's fires happening, floods, everything's happening now. So I guess it's preparation. And as Jen Bendel's page is, is adaptation. How do you go forward? Um, it's, it's, it's a lot. It really is a lot. It's a real lot. So we're going on 30 minutes. And I covered pretty much everything on the UN report because there, as I said, there's going to be at least 10 people doing something on this that will fill in the gaps. Um, but I thought that, you know, I could have picked one of the, here, maybe I can show you, um, the sensation, no, that, I don't think that's it. Oh yeah, okay, let me show you the, the sensationalism out there today over this. This is USA Today, and USA Today, which is where I, I, I took their sleepwalking towards climate catastrophe, world must slash emissions immediately. Okay, now, see, I picked USA Today because that's the paper that everybody reads, right? You know, I don't know everybody. I don't read it, but it's online, and people are going to see that, and it used to be in the supermarkets. It used to be right in the supermarkets, right? And so if that document is saying it, it's it's all over Twitter, this report. It's the same thing as that scientist's, um, the thing uh, that came out, the 1,100 scientists, right? All right. Well, I got some shit for that because then it was going around that, oh, it wasn't 11,000 scientists and, you know, Roger Rabbit signed and blah, blah, blah. So here we are. This is the UN. And yes, there is a lot to criticize. People other than me do it, you know. Actually, I'm really not equipped to criticize the United Nations. But those that are do because everything critique is how you get better. And I take it. You know, and I have taken it. So um, I, I really appreciate you guys coming. There's a pretty nice chat and there's 30 of you. All of you, give me a thumbs up, even though it really probably doesn't mean anything for me. But there is something coming up December 5th. And a lot of us small YouTubers have been um, <sighs> warned to um, maybe watch our videos or take our videos down or YouTube is, um, okay, now I get a little rest from that. <laughs> it held my neck up. Oh, here I am with a real neck. Okay, but anyway, us YouTubers are having to um, watch. And there's one more thing I want to do today. I want to give a, a, la a shout out to Nicole Sandler, who has a show every day on Progressive Talk and Progressive Voices and also her own YouTube. And she has an hour show every day at uh, 3 o'clock. What is it? 3 o'clock Eastern. And I like it. And she did her show with a comedian named Laffy today. 
and Diane is her mod. I like them. I, I enjoy the, the show. So just wanted to give her a shout out. I give a lot of people shouts out and I like her. I think she's funny. Her and Laffy together are funny. And I don't, you know, again, I don't always agree with them. I don't always agree with everybody. I have my own, you know, worldview, thoughts, whatever. Um, oh, Moose Gal, she's bringing up something here. Congress just voted to reauthorize the Patriot Act by sneaking it into a must-pass bill to prevent a government shutdown, and Democrats went right along with it. Oh, that's going to be an interesting one to see. I, I was, uh, I guess there was a chat room, and we were all talking about the Patriot Act. I don't remember whose show it was. I watched quite a few. I'm going to give a shout out to Let the Madness Begin because L T M B. They are on at seven o'clock Tuesdays, Thursdays tonight, so I like to watch them, and I hope that it's reciprocal. So everybody have a great night and thank you Moose Gal for that and Jean and Jilly and Copy Cooney. Um, don't forget to follow XR also. I had to get that, that little one in. There's so many. I could sit here and talk for an hour about my favorite YouTubers and scientists and all, but I think that would probably be overkill. So we'll see you in the chats. Peace out. And I'll put the links up afterwards. Night.